This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. Yeah, and there we go with number 18 of the Monocast. Hello, Leon. Good hello. Morning. <laughs> and hello, dear listener out there. We had quite a bit pre-show already. Oh, yeah. We missed a big, big part. <laughs> um, and that's because we do have a ton of content today. Um, including a really exciting interview with our friend Joey Keller from Hungary uh, on the topic of email marketing with Mordic as an excellent tool for it. Um, before we go there, we have uh, bits and pieces and tips and tricks and best practices here and there. And you will hear the name Joey pop up over and over again. It's a super joyful episode. It's a jo- joyful. A joyful. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, let's let's get going. And uh, we start with what again? Um, we're starting with a blog post, um, also related a bit to Joey. It's written by uh, René Petri, who is also in the same agency as Joey. And it's about a perfect, um, ah, perfect, about a good campaign on how to get started with Mordic because many people want like an example campaign about something they can relate and understand well and there's a super good article about uh, how to do that and the whole campaign is explained very well and yeah yeah and uh, specifically it is not an abstract thing like like uh create some sort of value and uh, make the people fill in the form yep. um, they really talk about or give a, a, a tangible example of uh, attracting people and motivating to fill in the form right now so a lead campaign that really works uh, yeah what i would put it and it really consists of the, the big point is they use a countdown so they have some some sort of deadline and encounter and they have a focus item or uh, some pop-up that, that displays the counter and, and the, the things behind it behind it and then we when you click the link in the pop-up you come to a landing page with a form and in the form again you have the, the countdown and then the next steps like like okay send an email when the deadline is, is reached and um, uh, do, do, do all that automate it with, with a modern campaign of course and uh, create a segment for follow-up actions etc yeah so a regular lead generation generation and lead nurturing campaign but with really really um, specific examples and, and ideas in mind yeah and so. the link to it is in the show notes as always exactly yeah good stuff from from friendly in in, in switzerland yeah and now coming to something a bit more nerdy there was a post in the forum about how to um, save HTML in the contact field when a forum is filled out. And there are some problems with saving HTML. Be- yeah, well, I wouldn't call it a problem. It's well, intentional. It's, it's a security feature. It could be a problem. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's tricky. But, but it, generally, um, tags... Um, in in storing text in a database is a bad idea because it's a vulnerability to cross site scripting. So True. it's a security thing yep. to strip off any tags when when user generates content. And so when when you have a field and you field uh, in, a, in a form, mm-hmm. and say it's a hidden field and and you will auto populate it with with some markup like like bold text or something yep. um Mordic will throw away that because it says whoa no no the, the, <laughs> this tags are no good oh, here no, no, for no. security purposes <laughs> and that's good that Mordic does it but nonetheless sometimes you want to do that and if so there's a trick to make it possible uh and that's by using um a thing published by a friend Stena Kuzmani yep. called Mordic custom text bundle which allows you or which enables Mordic to turn a, 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 a string into a hash, which is a, a, a very, very generic um, uh, set of numbers and, and uh, characters, yep. but without any tags. Um, so that can, without any danger, be stored. Uh, Mordic will have no problems with that. And on the way back, it can be re- reverted into the original string, including the bold or whatever you like. Yeah, perfect. So, um, 
a bit of manipulation on the way in and out <laughs> um, works well as, as, as at least people in the forum post say so yep. so problem solved and uh, thumbs up to Stena yeah perfect done and uh, staying in the forum there was again um, not a post by Joey but a post in which he participated and gave really good answers and thoughts about um, how people can use stages efficiently and the relationship between stages and segments and Joey gave an example on how he use the stages in um, the sales funnel including after sales and yeah the really really good like forum post and yeah it's, it's a it's a big t topic people let's let's uh, step back a little bit and, and ask what what are stages in the first place um, because it's not necessarily necessarily something that people use in Mordic, uh, but it's a concept that is a concept that is very common in marketing and in online marketing. If you think of a funnel, then you have those stage stages like like uh, anonymous visitor, um, known lead, existing customer, past customer, whatever. Yeah. Um, those stages d differ. Uh, depending whether it's b2c or maybe the nature of your goods and, and industries yeah. um and uh, there's always different ways to to view it as, uh, so there's no right and wrong here so this discussion is really about best practice what stages should i have and then how why are they useful and that's a good question because if you want to act on that basis Stages are not good and not really helpful. So most people say, ah, forget about stages. <laughs> um, just use segments. Yeah. Uh, the other way, the, the other thing you can do is use both. Have, have a segment that is auto-populated based on the stage. So you have a filter and segment and say, if stage is an uh, existing customer, then, uh, then put that contact into this segment. Yeah. Um, so the, the big value of stages is that you have a very clear view on on your funnel on on your pipeline mm -hmm. and can can see and and compare over time how well the stages are populated whether a certain part of the funnel is growing or declining yes. um and so that's some some value and um there are more aspects to it like like uh, how how is the transition between stages that could for instance be a campaign action um so bottom line is Make up your mind on what you really want to achieve. Stay, <laughs> start simple, like yeah. always, and then go from there. Yeah. And to keep on doing things that pop up in the forum, <laughs> uh, there was another thing in the forum which was pretty interesting. Um, somebody spoke about the wish to sponsor plugin enhancement so he was talking about the Twilio plugin and he wanted some new features and just some plugin. general yeah. enhancements yeah. and that popped up a discussion about where in the forum is even the right place for such discussion and if there is a right place because currently there is this one category I think it's called commercial yeah. where things like that could be placed and there's also in the slack channel the um, channel called marketplace where things like that could be done but where would be a good place is the question yeah and, and for what oh, in, this, in this case uh, hey i want someone to, to enhance an existing public uh, plugin which is good thing of course oh, it is <laughs> but that could, could be much broader like uh, like uh, hey, I need some training. Hey, um, who could create a new plugin? Yep. Hey, could who could help me with uh, setting up Mordic? Who hey, who could give me advice on inbound marketing in general? Or even uh, we're hiring people. We're looking for freelancers. Um, or on the other on the other hand, we're offering services, etc. So it's a really broad topic. Oh yeah. And this um, hashtag commercial uh, forum uh, is 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 used but not too frequently mm -hmm. and I, I suspect people don't know it well don't don't look at it well um so the the point here is 
wh where do we want to go, short term and long term? And and I would really be keen to learn about your ideas and ideas and your thought, thoughts. How how active should the Mordic project and the Mordic community be to support that sort of commercial um, interaction? Yep. And what are the way, be, uh, best ways to do it? In like in, in short term, should we just promote the core forum category more? Should we come up with other ideas? Um, and what what would be a long term vision, or would be what would be aspects for a long term vision? B, um, as Leon already said, we did have a bit of uh, conversation on on ideas uh, internally, but um, this is of general interest, I'm sure. So, is, so yeah. please do do give me feedback, or to do give us all feedback. I guess we we should have a thread in the forum about exactly that yeah. and and i point to it in the show notes and yes, i always. <laughs> love to hear from everybody so yeah go um next up speaking of sponsorship um another thing we never mentioned that is pretty new yeah. is the option to sponsor mortic in general yeah. to, to give some money on a regular basis to the mortic project and we do have um, open collective for that um, we also have GitHub sponsoring for that, and we now have a program where people can decide on a, a monthly amount to give to Mordic, yep. and that's that's actually some good value in return. Like your name is listed on Mordic.org slash sponsors, and from $100 uh, on, I guess. I think $100, um, yeah. You even get a logo in the backlink from Mordic.org, which is a tremendous value, I guess. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, so um, if you're interested, Go for it. It's it's a uh, it's budget. It's it's good thing. So go. it's worth the buck. <laughs> yeah. So last up in in the forums, um, uh, we do have a feature wish item of the week. And yeah. That's one we stumbled upon recently, and then the the background is not a new one. The idea is we want to know how somebody came to our website originally. So what was the original campaign or original source of, of um, this visit? And specifically, if it's a campaign, we want to know the UTM parameters. Of course. So the idea is to have a way to store that into a contact field. I think it's no big deal to uh, implement that, but it, it is just not solvable as of today with... with um, with existing technology so it is an enhancement and it's a feature area in the forums and if you like it go do that post and uh, vote it up and uh, let us know uh, how important it is for you link to that in the show notes <laughs> yeah where else <laughs> yeah so that was uh, a ton of content and uh, again here's a person who has been on fire recently it's joey keller here we go yeah, welcome, Joey Keller. Hey, Joey, how are you doing? You are in Budapest right now, right? Hey, uh, good to have you on on the Mordecast. We have been in touch a couple of times in the past, and I m mentioned you recently because of one extensive forum post that you did, and um, I thought it's high time for for us to to speak because. Uh, your name pops up again and again, and you're doing good content, and I thought it's worth having a chat. So glad to have you here. Thanks. Thanks so much for inviting me. Uh, <coughs> I'm a loyal listener of the podcast anyway, so yeah. I'm happy to be here. And yes, I am I am popping up lately in the, in the Morik forums. I love to contribute, so... I'm glad if someone finds it useful what I'm posting there. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's talk about that later. But but first, um, tell us a little bit about your professional background. I know you started off in in the airline business, is that right? Yeah, well, actually, that was like the second step. I'm a tourism major, and uh, I got to the airline, actually, because I wrote my diploma work from from e-business for airlines and at that time the hungarian airlines just looked for someone who, who is knowledgeable about that and i remember in my diploma work we had uh, topics like what is a banner so it was in the year 2000 long time ago <laughs> and i could say many new things to the people who were uh, very closely acquainted with telex machines before and email was a was a big deal 
And uh, yeah, so I became a member of a team which built the first uh, e-ticketing for the airline and the website. And yeah, it was pretty wild ride at that time. Uh, and then I I moved from the airlines to be a online marketer, um, worked by a social network and also by a, by a company which mostly dealt with with large scale marketing, online marketing, email marketing. So I have a strong background in email. So that was in the US, is that right? That was an American company, but I'm a freelancer. I was a nomad, so I I stayed mostly in Budapest. Yes, I lived in the US and and some other places in Europe as well. But that was mostly for learning languages. So for a while, I'm I'm stationed here in Budapest, and I'm working from here as a digital nomad. Yeah, and. and We've been going back and forth in, in English uh, for a while until yes. it, it occurred to me that you are also fluent in, in German. But let's stick with English for, for the okay, sake thanks. of the podcast here. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Um, so the when when you say you've been a freelancer for, for quite a while now, um, that has changed recently. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, that changed. Um, well, when I was working for the American company or American companies, let's put it this way, I decided to be a full-time freelancer again beginning of this year, but I had the chance to join uh, Friendly, which is uh, Friendly Automate. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's basically a, a modic service provider uh, which focuses on ethical marketing tools. We have two products, Matomo and uh, Modic so far. Uh, I joined in April and um, became CTO pretty soon. So I am officially employee number one as well. So it's a it's a small startup. Mm. And that, that is in Switzerland, correct? That is in Switzerland, it's yeah. It's so fascinating yeah, I, that Switzerland yeah. come, becomes like... like the the epicenter of of uh, Modic <laughs> and then Modic SaaS companies, etc., That seems so. Yeah, I'm yeah. also shocked about it and surprised, yeah. but uh, quite happy. Yeah, no, no, it's it's uh, it's good. What what I when I looked up friendly is, which is a domain, and I put that in the show note. Um, so when when I looked at their website, the one thing uh, that also struck me that you are an open startup, and I have to admit I didn't know what that term means or what, that it even exists. Can you explain to us the concept of the open startup? Yeah, sure. So. Um, that's also my first time to work for an open startup. Uh, open startup is that we are completely open about everything. That includes our product backlog, our uptimes, our plans, our incomes, the number of clients, our salaries, our costs, everything basically is out there. So you go to our website and it's on the bottom of the page. Mm. You can look into all the data. So we're trying to build trust with this. We're trying to build um, traction as well. And um, yeah, we're playing with open cards. And it's really interesting. I mean, our customers love it. Um, and um, yeah, it's also a great uh, topic to speak about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's uh, certainly very, very modern and, and uh, aggressive too. Um, but but I have to think about it myself, about the implications, I have to admit. But you didn't invent this, did you? No, no, no. Well, we are, um, there are many open startups. Actually, uh, if you look at bearmetrics.com, you can see a couple of companies. Mm. Buffer is one of the, oh, yeah. one of the most well, like well-known um, foregoers, mm -hmm. so to say. Hmm. Yeah, cool. Really good. Um, Now, um, what what people read from you is mostly about email, and I um, assume that that is because that has been your major expertise in, in the past, and it is yeah. your passion still. Is that fair description? Yeah, well, I found Modic because I was working for... So, uh, in America everything is bigger. So when you work for a marketing company, then you send monthly like 20, 40, 50, 100 million emails. Mm. And there's certain ways to do this. Uh, and Modic doesn't fit in this, actually, because you have to scale it already in such a way which is not so easy. So mm. we rarely use Modic. We use Modic for uh, smaller companies. 
and uh, and I found it fascinating that you can build relationship with customers with the help of Monic, and actually that's the ultimate goal because the best in- in- inboxing you will get if you're building relationships. So Monic is actually the best tool for inboxing, I have to say, from all the tools I've tried. Mm. And you can have great you know, platform which sends millions of emails, but if you manage to build relationships, you will inbox everywhere. Yep. So I was quite happy with Monic. I'm also happy that it's not scaled for 100 million emails a month, at least not out of the box. Correct. And um, and I quite enjoy working with it. So it became also my main expertise. And uh, and I'm really geeking out in the forum about email. So whenever there is a question about inboxing, I, I try to answer and I try to um, try to show people how to how to inbox better. Yeah, I, I noticed that that you have a lot of technical insights that you share, um, but you are also active in, in uh, educating people how to get the most value out of email, and regardless of technology, just, just how to use email and email nurturing and everything the right way. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, um, so <laughs> in general, inboxing is really, um, or emailing, well, the, the ultimate goal is to inbox. The ultimate goal is to to have a response, to sell something, to have a positive response from your from your uh, from your contacts. Mm. And you can only do it if you inbox. So that's usually the number one. How can I get to the inbox? And that usually comes down to a couple of things like how often you send, what is the response rate when you send. So how you structure your your marketing campaigns, putting the openers first, mm. the non-responsive ones later. How you create, for example, in Modic, you can you can create a campaign when you separate your contacts into different segments based on how often you send an email mm-hmm. or how, how often they react. I'm sorry. So if someone opens an email frequently, they will get let's say three 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 times a week from you. Yeah. But if they not opening three emails, then you put them in another segment where they're getting like a digest of a, mm. of the previous two emails. So they just get one email per week. So you can do these kind of tricks. And, uh, and I, yeah, I like to share this on the, on the forum also about the settings and, and um, uh, authentication is also very important. Yeah. So just to make sure uh, that that we have everything everybody on board here can can you give a simple example to our listeners of a campaign that involves inboxing so inboxing means that you are landing in the inbox yeah that's what i meant so for example you have any any email campaign oh, yeah. even even if it's a newsletter mm-hmm. by inboxing i mean you're delivering to the inbox so gmail introduced different kinds of tabs uh, also, Yahoo recently changed their uh, filtering process, so you're more likely to land in spam box. Uh, Hotmail is having very strict restrictions about landing in the inbox. So when I say about inboxing, that's the that's the the moment when you actually land in front of your contact. Okay. That's Delivery. the most valuable spot in the person's inbox is when you are in the inbox, not in the promotions, not in the spam, but you are in the inbox. Because delivering an email, that's easy. You can do it. Mm. But landing in front of your contacts with all this noise, mm. that's really hard. Mm. Um, do you have any tools for, for testing the, the various stages of, of the process mm-hmm. of getting into the inbox? So I use Glock apps uh, because you can, they have a, a, such a tool that you can send out like 70 or 80 uh, test emails, their mm-hmm. own emails, and they will tell you where you landed, inbox, spam box, promotions, and so on, mm-hmm. divided by um, ESP. So Gmail, Hotmail, gmx.ch, gmx.de, you know, Russian providers, chat providers, mm-hmm. you name it. Uh, and they give you suggestions. So what you should tweak in order to land more in the inbox. 
And uh, this is a very good tool. So if you are a beginner, I, I suggest it for you. You can also go to the pricing page and do some tricks that you have to pay less, actually. So mm -hmm. I highly recommend that because you don't need all their services. Yeah. Um, and you can pay up to, I don't know, like really like $15, $20 a month. And with Glowcaps, the point is it's really cool. You can, they will tell you something wrong with your authentication. You should add this line to your domain. Or you mm -hmm. should use more text, less images, or your HTML is breaking because of that, or there is a dead link. That's one of the things which is, which is very important. Now, the other thing, what many people don't know, when you try to inbox, uh, your domain reputation also counts, uh, into the big number. I would say you get like a credit score and this big number depends on all the different parts, uh, like, uh, your domain reputation, IP reputation, what you're sending with, how fast you're sending with, what relationship you have with your with your contact, and so on. So um, domain reputation is one of them. And when you send out, let's say you install Marik on marik.com, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, and that's where you're sending from, that's your sending domain. This will leave a mark in each email due to tracking reasons. And if your links are pointing somewhere else, then that link's domain reputation also will count. And if one of them is bad, that can pull your domain down and your whole inboxing down. So that means you have a campaign and you're sending out 1 million emails. Then you're like, okay, I burned this domain. I want to switch to another one. So you switch to same domain.net, but you send with the same Marik. That Marik domain will be already tainted, and it will pull down your whole domain reputation, mm -hmm. and you will not inbox. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's too technical, but it's important that all the ingredients in your email has to have a good reputation in order to properly inbox. That's the bottom line, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I, th I think it, it, if you want to get it right, if you want to do it large scale, it, it is a lot of. Uh, Fine-tuning. Yeah, a lot of small things, yeah, that's and, correct. And a lot of pitfalls, can, which can really hurt you badly. Yeah, good point. Um, now, um, let's talk about Mordic as a, as a tool for doing all this, because uh, this is uh, email... Oh, no, before we go there, uh, I have another uh, thing that w we've been discussing back and forth um, with, with clients, and that is... How good does email work in 2020? Do you still believe it, spe specifically outside of the US? It's a very good question. So email has a renaissance because uh, I think that all the ESPs like Gmail, Hotmail, and all the rest, uh, including the, the spam filters like Barracuda, and all the spam filters basically on the market are focusing on one thing, be the best possible spam filter ever or have the best possible spam filter. Mm -hmm. So what's the result? The result is that you're getting less spam. So if you're getting less spam, then you can, the, the honest companies, the good businesses, which actually want to build relationship and they have a, they, they have a legit reason to write you, have a lot better ch chance to inbox. Mm -hmm. So I say, if you are a legit business and you are an honest emailer, it's the best time for you now because there is a way, like uh, the, the, the major uh, ESPs are filtering out the rest of the bad guys. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, now it's a, it's a great time to be an emailer and it still has the best uh, return on investment. I guess that is the point, right? So if yeah. you get to the face of the customer, yeah, um, they still react to it, and um, if, if it's done right, of course, it, it involves brains. <laughs> yes. And, and in the end, the, the cost is 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 uh, okay. <laughs> I guess yeah, it's very low. Yeah. Um, okay. Now, what what I wanted to say previously was uh, more take as a tool. There there are a million of ideas. What else we could do to mm -hmm. make email or more an even better email tool and specifically the builder there's been multiple initiatives now to uh, come up with new uh, interfaces and um, I asked you uh, well, the other week about that about your opinion about it and you said hmm, not, <laughs> not so convinced uh, that it's there yet but also not so convinced that it's really important and uh, that, that really stunned me can you talk about yeah. that? 
So it's a two it's two things. Um, so when you first when you have a business, Morica service. Uh, it's very important that everything is shiny, it works out of the box, and there's lots of eye candies. Mm. When mm. you first try to recruit a new client, uh, then you have to make sure that it looks good because that's what they're going to uh, you know, decide on, that what, what looks good and easy to use. Mm. Now, you can show the Mautic email builder and uh, the, the page builder, and you can just say, you know, this is something you've seen many times, drag and drop, great. But once they start playing around with it and they realize that, so how do I make my own template with a couple of clicks? Mm. How do I make sure that the different sections are not um, uh, um, suddenly, you know, being embedded into each other because I put five pixels to the left. So everybody knows there are some issues with the legacy email builder. Um, it's not the best and people will notice it and it is really frustrating mm -hmm. when someone tries to play with it and then suddenly it just doesn't work. Uh, and everybody knows that and it's been a project uh, for a long time and I see very good signs. But when you try to have emails that actually land in your inbox, then you should forget all these eye candies. The best performing campaigns are still the text-based ones. That's why, for example, we created a, a, a Gmail-like template uh, for our clients because it's uh, it's uh, super uh, super easy to to use. It's like basically you are sending a Gmail. Uh, it's ugly, yeah, sure, but mm. it surely delivers. Mm. And um, if you want to go fancy. Yeah. Uh, then I think sure you should you should have you should have a better email builder. But once you create one template, then you can also stick to it, and it's going to be fine. So you can live without it. Uh, but I would be more happy simply because it's the product itself, like Modic itself, is easier to to uh, introduce to people, and uh, for the new customers, it's easier to pick up the email creation. Yeah, yeah. Um... I 100% agree about the importance of, of text-only emails and I, I, I always have a hard time to explain to clients that, that maybe it's not the greatest idea to have a fancy and shiny HTML email because as, as a user, you really don't give a crap. It's, uh, That's it's annoying. Um, yeah, so, you want to test in, you know, 19 different email readers. That's the other I thing, don't. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, the developers love it. Yeah. Um, but, um, oh, God, what did I want to say? Yeah, um, so oh, wait, just oh, one yeah, more yeah, thing we talked about is yeah. uh, before that, we talked about this, that um, clients actually like to play around with the emails because that's the moment of creativity for them. <laughs> <laughs> And we are taking that away right now. Yeah. So that's one of, but at the, at the end of the day, it will, you know, they will calm down and they will just want to focus on their own content. Yeah. So I, I would be really happy to see a modern email builder and page builder, uh, especially the page builder, maybe even a form builder. So I hope that's, that's going to happen soon. Yeah, we have move, movement everywhere, but but uh, yeah, one step after the, or yeah, well, not after the other, all in parallel, but, but. Uh, yeah, not not lending in time. Um, but I re really wanted to uh, ask you what you mean by by Gmail like template because uh, I, I I don't get that. What does an e email uh, from I Gmail look like? G yeah. So if you take a Gmail and write to yourself a Gmail mm. and take out the HTML what Gmail produces as a default. Yeah. And turn it into a oh, template. Okay, got it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's that's basically a very simple, bare, yeah. naked template, almost like a text. Yeah. Okay. So it is HTML. It is better looking than than ASCII text. Yeah. And it, it's very familiar to people. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Um, yeah, we did already touch about um, progress in in Mordic, and I I know that that you are. Uh, contributing there and, and uh, willing to, to do more there, but but where you massively contribute today is uh, the forums and in, in, in educating people, uh, both in, in friendly mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you in person on on the forums. So um, 
tell me a little bit of of your motivations how how did that come to happen um so a couple of months ago there was a post where someone was complaining that why never anyone ever answers and i felt really bad because i was i also asked a couple of questions sometimes i got an answer sometimes i didn't mm. and it's really frustrating and i was like okay you know what i'm going to answer everything i can and i got hooked on that so now you see me three four times checking the forum and if i know the answer i i try to answer and if i can i do a longer one maybe someone can refer to it in the future uh what i noticed is mostly is the same things like emails cron jobs uh clear the cache yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah standard things and really some other 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 um issues but mostly it's also coming from the fact that people don't see the whole picture because there is not yet a uh, tutorial which takes your hand and then educates you until you are a master of modic mm -hmm. Uh, and we talked about it that it's really hard to do because people coming from different backgrounds they use the business for different things yeah. they they need completely different modules maybe someone will never use a, a page builder or uh, they don't care about stages yeah. so um but uh, i think that sharing these uh, these ideas how to use certain certain features in mm. the in the forum opens con conversations And these conversations are leading to great realizations that we, I, there are some people who also contribute like me and we are like, you know, all of us sitting, oh, okay, I didn't know you can do that. So there's lots of aha uh -huh experiences and how it is happening in the forum. And since I am not uh, a coder on that level that I could contribute, I think this is my way to chip in. Yeah, yeah, excellent. I, th I agree that, that we need more content and we also need more visibility of of the quality content so having that in the forums is is a great start um you on your own side have, have a col collection li like in an inventory of of tutorials that you found in the web so so i, I put that in the show notes too if you like Or if you don't mind. Okay, I, I make sure that I publish it by then because it's <laughs> unpolished at the moment. But thank you. That's a good um, a good incentive for me to finish up that page. Yeah, cool. Um, and uh, the education team and, and Leon, they are working hard to bring the knowledge, uh, the, the knowledge base uh, the, of Modic.org, the new one live and then that is a slower moving but hopefully the result will be really comprehensive and and will um give people access to all the good content that is out there in the internet and uh motivate inspire people to to uh, to contribute and to add or to update or whatever it takes to make it even more comprehensive so so these bits and pieces in the knowledge base is one thing guided tutorials that that connect the pieces is another thing uh there's more to it like like uh, international versions or multi-language things etc hmm. um but i hear that time and again that 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 is the, the biggest uh, inhibitor to to getting started with modic is the lack of clear path in education and and Yeah, the good thing is we're getting there, and and of course, the, at the core of it is is people like you who are, who are willing and able to to produce excellent content. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, you're welcome. I'll be trying to do it. So th there are some some amazing contents out there. Uh, like you said about this page, where I where I created, and it's on my website. Mm. There are people uh, like. Uh, Really, I'm gonna miss someone out, but like Alex Summerschmidt or Chris Calabro or guys from Cactus, Auto Eyes, Yosu, lots of people yeah, yeah, yeah. are making amazing uh, tutorials, mm -hmm. which are little islands of knowledge. And the, the the best would be to to really connect these tutorials somehow yeah. and make them in a form, like you said, that that make it you know uh, that we can post it in the knowledge base. Um, 
I think that uh, we try by friendly, we are trying to create uh, uh, example websites, example businesses. We, we have actually one already up and running where we look at this business. We created a web, web shop, which doesn't work. It's just an example web shop mm -hmm. with products and uh, working Mautic installation. And we are guiding from zero to hero guiding the, the owner, the imaginary owner, yeah. how to use Modic and what to use it for and put it in a video series. So that's something we, we will try. And if it works, maybe we can do the same thing also for the knowledge base for more broader audience. Yeah, very cool. Lovely. Um, yeah, which brings me to maybe the last question. And that is the Modicon, obviously, which is coming up. Uh, Call for Speakers is open. Uh, did you apply already? I did not, but uh, I think I will. Um, maybe I will talk about emailing in general. Like the question comes up, what what do you need for a good uh, good campaign, or what are the, what are the basic requirements for yeah. having the chance to inbox at all? And maybe maybe I will I will do something where I'm summarizing these and showing how to go through the different tools and and how to use them. Yeah. Maybe that would be interesting for some people. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. We need a lot of stuff like that. And you're welcome to do more than one. <laughs> yeah. cool. Okay, dokey. Um, yeah. Did we forget anything? Anything else you want to mention, maybe? No, I think we, we covered pretty much everything. So it's, 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 it was fun. Okay, cool. Yeah, I like it too. Um, and I, I once again, I appreciate the work that you do. So keep it up. And... Uh, I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you very much for today. And sure. Take care. You're very welcome. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Thanks Joey. Bye-bye. Yeah, it's a pleasure to work with Joey. And on a side note, um, by the time we are recording this episode, he already submitted a talk for the Morticon. And I'm super stoked about the contribution Joey is actually doing for the community. Heads yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, yeah, and speaking of Morticon, um, Obviously, the call for speakers is still open, but coming to an end very soon. It's, I think it's just a few days from now. So, a reminder for everyone, there are two uh, formats there that you can submit. One is the lightning talk with just a five minutes pitch for anything. Like, yeah. like hey, let's uh, do this. Or, hey, take a look at here, over hit here. Or, um, or we need this. Or this is bad. Or whatever <laughs> your, uh, your message is. So, five minutes is really... Simple things, and if you have anything to say for the community and for the Mordic uh, universe, uh, that's your five minutes. Perfect. And if you are able and willing to put in a little bit more preparation, then the, there's a full slot of 30 minutes. Um, again, for all categories, from from uh, inbound marketing to using Mordic technically to Mordic development, hardcore <laughs> stuff, yeah. nerd stuff. Um, to community stuff or what, whatever you have or maybe uh, use cases, showcases, uh, offerings that you have as a company or whatever. So it's open for everyone. It is even international. So if you are in other languages, you're very welcome to submit your talks in other languages. Um, yeah. So just a couple of days to go. Uh, I think end of the, I'm not sure. End of this week, I believe. Um, so waste no time. Submit your talk. You don't need to uh, to to write it all now. You just need a two-liner description of what it is, and uh, then you have a lot of time left. The other thing coming up is this Saturday another meetup in Lagos, Nigeria, uh, organized like always by our friend Toby. Yeah, and um, he's doing excellent stuff, especially by getting having. Um, talks from all over the world this is obviously an online event mm -hmm. and the, he is uh, presenting fantastic content here from really knowledgeable speakers and um, we had good stuff already go and look it up in U youtube and if you have the chance this saturday uh it is in nigeria but it is online so, <laughs> so uh, visitors from all around the world are very welcome yeah, yeah don't miss that one yeah, so um, we did already say um, give us feedback on the commercial 
stuff i would r r remind everybody to to uh, tell us your thoughts um i think it's important discussion that that's another step to the future of of modic which yeah. is important um, kind of yeah <laughs> we're like always keen to hear, hear any other sort of feedback on modic but specifically on the modic cast <laughs> um Do recommend us, uh, tell everybody about it. Uh, I still Hopefully, run into yeah. people who have never heard about Mod Modicast. Wow, how can <laughs> that be? <laughs> Is um, that possible? <laughs> yeah, so so spread the word, give us feedback, uh, and we're happy to hear from you in any event. So for now, um, thanks for listening. Talk to you soon and uh, take care. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye.